social justice. Dr. Martin Luther King in 1963, quote, I have a dream. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. And you write, Dr. King's message was equal opportunity for individuals, regardless of race. In the years that followed, the goal changed to equal outcomes for groups. What now rose to dominance was the social justice agenda. If the social justice, those backing the social justice agenda could have everything they wanted, what would the country look like? Uh, we'd be killing each other. <laughs> All right. Can you give me intermediate steps? <laughs> In other words, what is the well, social well, justice agenda? What do they want? They, they, they want everybody to have, have, have equal, equal outcomes or as close as they can get to it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you, you, don't have, uh, you don't have the preconditions for that. Uh, even in the same family, I, one of the examples I, I, I use in the book is uh, uh, among, um, in, uh, among five child families, right. uh, the national merit finalist is the firstborn just over half the time. That is, more often than the other four siblings combined. Right. The, the fifth born is 6% of the time. And so there was even where, where you have almost ideal conditions. They're born to the same parents, raised under the same roof, and they're not the same. Because all kinds of things matter, including birth order. The, oh, absolutely, right. absolutely. Right. All right, let's, you, you take on various fallacies here. Let's take on a couple of them. The equal chances fallacy. Even in a society, I'm quoting you, social justice fallacies, even in a society with equal opportunity, people from different backgrounds do not necessarily even want to do the same things. In American sports, blacks are very overrepresented in professional basketball, whites in professional tennis, and Hispanics in Major League Baseball. Why is that telling? Because the, the, the implicit assumption, and sometimes explicit assumption, is that in a world where everything was fair, where everyone was treated fairly, you would have uh, things would be representative of the population the demographics as a whole and all these various activities. Right. Imagine a, a black kid born in Harlem and he's born with a, a body identical to that of uh, Rudolph Nureyev, the great uh, ba uh, uh, ballet dancer. There's, 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 the odds are a thousand to one that he'll become a ballet dancer, much less another Rudolph Nureyev. I mean, he would be uh, looked at strangely by all his uh, uh, friends in the neighborhood it's, if he even wanted to do that. What you mean? But he, he, chances are he wouldn't even think about it. Right, right, right. So you mean to say that when you tried out for the Brooklyn Dodgers, <laughs> you tried out for the pitching position in the Brooklyn Dodgers, and they didn't hire you, you were not being discriminated against? <laughs> Actually, I was trying out, out for first base, and the real, real reason I messed up was that my position was center field. But in order to be a good center fielder, I need hours and hours of, uh, of practice. And, and it, was, it was a very bad spring. I got very little practice. And so I figured I, at least I, 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 I won't go out and make, make an idiot of myself and send it feel as I made an idiot of myself at first base. <laughs> right. Um, chess pieces fallacy. The chess pieces fallacy. Yeah. Explain that one. Well, Adam Smith uh, uh, had a very low opinion of abstract theorists who imagine that they can... Uh, control a, a whole society uh, with the ease with which one puts, uh, puts chess pieces where you want them on, the, on, a, on, a, on a chess board. And so this, there's this notion of this inert mass of people down there and then the wonderfully brilliant people at the top who ought to be telling them what to do. And there's no thought that, uh, first of all, those at the top don't even know us, the people's uh, uh, individual conditions who are very different from themselves, and when they try to help, they make things, they can make things disastrous. 
you discuss a theory of justice. This is under knowledge fallacy. Yes. A theory of justice, which is in certain circles, certain circles, every university in the country, the mm. philosophy department, political science, you'll get it in sociology. This is the big book oh, yeah. on social justice written by John Rawls, philosopher at Harvard. Qu I'm quoting you, Tom. Rawls refers to things that society should arrange. You quote him, arrange, that's yeah. the word he uses. And then Tom Sowell says, interior decorators arrange, governments compel. It is not a subtle distinction. Explain that. Well, if you're going to try to get some kind of result, you have to specify through what kinds of mechanism you expect to get that result. And different mechanisms, whether it's the government, the market, uh, the Red Cross, whatever, they have their own individual things that they're good at and not so good at. And so you can't get the, the social justice result that you want unless you have the kind of uh, institution that's likely to produce that result. Politics is not that kind of institution. And yet they all implicitly rely on government. Yes. Redistribution of wealth, uh, adjusting, uh, uh, using legal regimes to adjust the proportions of various groups that get certain jobs. They all rely on government. And what's distinctive about government is it's the one institution that can send you to jail. Yes. All right. And that's, the point is that's dangerous. We shouldn't want more government, more hands in the power of the politicians. Yeah, one, of the, one, of, the the real, of, the one, one of the real problems is that you have people making decisions for which they pay no price when they're wrong, no matter how high a price other people pay. And I, right now, the, 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 the homicide rates are, are beyond anything that uh, were, were around, let's say, uh, prior to 1960. Uh, and I mentioned 1960 in this case uh, because that's when the Supreme Court remade the criminal law. Uh, they discovered rights in the Constitution that no one had noticed for over a century. Uh, and, and they were impervious to evidence. So contrast your neighborhood in Harlem mm. when you were an eight and nine and ten year old boy with what we see in neighborhoods in Chicago today. Oh say. my gosh. People are astonished when I tell them I grew up in Harlem. I can't remember ever hearing a gunshot. And then I, I, I've, I've checked with my relatives who grew up in similar neighborhoods in Washington and down in North Carolina. They never heard a gunshot when they were growing up. Uh, you know, uh, I remember going back to Harlem some years ago uh, to do some research at a high school. And uh, I looked out the window and there's this park there near the high school. And I mentioned in passing that when I, uh, when, I, when, I, when I lived in Harlem when I was a kid, I would take my dog uh, for a walk in that park, and looks of horror came over the students' faces. Uh, people have no idea how much has retrogressed over the years uh, in the black community, and, and how much of what progress has been made has not been made by politicians or by charismatic leaders. Uh, if you... One of the things that drives me crazy are people who uh, cite trends over time without deciding where they're going to start the, 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 the time period. For example, as I said, all sorts of wonderful things happened in the 1960s and beyond, uh, and especially for the minorities and the poor and so forth. Uh, so I, what I did, I said, no, well, you can't, if, you, if you start the data in 1960, we don't know how much, how much uh, was a result of that and how much was a result of other things. But that also applies in other things. So for the one, one simple one, uh, many people say, you know, Ralph Nader wrote this book in 1965 and as, about the automobile safety and so on. As a result, there were laws by the government and, the, and the, the death rates went down after that, which is true in itself. But the death rate went down at a far higher rate prior to his writing the book. And this was the continuation of, of, a, of a trend that went back uh, another 20 or 30 years. Because the market, because car manufacturers, when it came right down to it, had very little interest in getting people killed. Yes, if you kill off your customers, your chances are you won't sell as many cars. Another quote from Social Justice Fallacies 
Milton Friedman clearly understood this, a society that puts equality in the sense of equality of outcome ahead of freedom will end up with neither equality nor freedom. The use of force to achieve equality will destroy freedom and the force introduced for good purposes will end up in the hands of people who use it to promote their own interests. Indeed, if the social justice warriors got their way, they would certainly be killing each other. But then, it would seem we're already there because if you look at the things the media refuses to report on, it is clear that many have already been radicalized enough to carry out this tax. But you let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit that bell if you're new to the channel. Until the next video, stay free.